Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft, and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the next few videos, we're going to look at numerically solving ordinary differential equations, or ODEs. And here, we're just going to introduce some of the terminology that we're going to use, and we're going to demonstrate how to solve an ODE using the inbuilt functionality within Python's libraries. We're now going to look at problems of the form y prime of t is equal to f of t and y, with the condition that y of 0 is equal to y at subscript 0. And here, y of t is a n-dimensional function. And we could write this system out in full, and we would have that y prime of t is equal to a vector with components y1 prime to yn prime, and that will be equal to a vector with components f1 to fn. And this is a system of n coupled ODEs for the variables y1 to yn. And this is an initial value problem, and that implies that we know some initial data, and here we're given that y of 0 is equal to y subscript 0, and we call this the initial condition. The order of an ODE is given by the highest order derivative that appears in the equation. And so here, for this equation, y prime of t is equal to f of t of y, then the order will be 1, because the highest derivative is the y prime. From a numerical methods perspective, we can actually focus entirely on first order equations. And this is because higher order differential equations can be converted into systems of first order differential equations by introducing additional variables. And as an example, let's recall Newton's second law that we introduced previously. So we have that the acceleration y double prime of t is equal to our force f of t y and y prime divided by our mass m. And we might have two initial conditions that y of 0 is equal to y subscript 0, and y prime of 0 is equal to v subscript 0, a velocity. To convert this into a system of first order equations, let's introduce a new variable, v is equal to y prime, and then we can write down a first order system for v and y. We have that v prime is equal to f of t and y and v, and y prime is equal to v. And we have initial data now, y of 0 is equal to y subscript 0, and v of 0 is equal to v subscript 0. So if we have numerical methods that can solve first order systems, then we can now solve the second order system as well. Let's now look at an example ODE system, and we're going to look at the locker volterra model, which is a two-component nonlinear ordinary differential equation that can explain predator-prey interactions. And here we let y1 be the population of a prey species, for example rabbits, and we let y2 be the population of a predator species, for example foxes. And if we look at the ordinary differential equation for y1 prime, then we'll have two terms. We'll have an exponential growth in the prey, in the absence of any predators, and that will be given by alpha 1 times y1. We'll also have that prey are eaten by the predators, and that will correspond to a term minus beta 1 times y1 times y2. And we suppose that the rate at which prey are eaten is proportional to that product of the two populations. If we look now at the equation for the predators, then as they are eating the prey, they grow in population. So we have a term plus beta 2 times y1 times y2. And in the absence of any prey, the predators will exponentially decay. And that's given by a term minus alpha 2 times y2. And we're now going to look at solving this ODE system using one of Python's built-in ODE solving routines. Let's now take a look at the program l-v.py that can demonstrate one of Python's routines for solving differential equation systems. And in this program, 
we're going to demonstrate the function ODE int that's contained within the SciPy to integrate module. And we're going to run this function on the two component Locker Volterra system that can model predator prey interactions. And as described, this model has four constants alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, and beta 2. And we'll define these here using non dimensionalized units. We'll then write down a function f of y and t following our standard notation that evaluates the right hand side of our ODE system. And this has two components that represent the changes in the prey and predator populations. So our function will take in a two component vector for the current prey and predator populations and also the time. And it will then return the changes in the two populations. So in this part, we're defining the change in the prey population. We have exponential growth in the prey. And then we also have a negative term corresponding to the predator-prey interactions. In this part, we're defining the predator change, and we have an exponential decay term here, and then a positive term due to predator-prey interactions. So we'll then define a time range that we want to integrate our ODE system over, and here will integrate from 0 to 70 in non-dimensionalized units. And we also want to get back 500 samples of our ODE solution. And we'll define that here. We'll then define initial conditions for our prey and predator populations. And we'll then call the ODE int function. And this will take in three arguments. It will take in our right-hand side, f, it will take in our initial data, y init, and it will also take in the time range that we want to solve over. And this function will pass back a NumPy array that has two columns and 500 rows corresponding to our solution at the 500 time points that we requested. Note that the time points that we request do not necessarily match up with the time steps that the ODE routine actually took. In general, the ODE int routine is very accurate and may actually take smaller time steps than the time points that we request in our time array here. So the final part of the program will plot the solutions. So let me now go ahead and run this program. And if we take a look at the results here, then we see that we have a cyclical pattern emerge. So to begin with, we see that the prey is reduced to a small value and then because there are very few prey, then the predators start to exponentially decay. However, once we get to only having few predators, then the prey can start to exponentially grow, and we have a large peak in the prey. However, once we start to get more prey, then the predators will have more food sources available, and the predators will also grow. And that will then lead to a decay in prey because the number of predators has increased. And we see that the behavior then enters this cyclical cycle that is very typical of the Locker Volterra model. This program demonstrates some of the basic functionality of the ODE int function, but there are many more options that you can provide that can control things like accuracy and the particular integration method that are used. And you can take a look at the SciPy website for more information. As we saw in the example, Python could efficiently solve this coupled nonlinear ODE problem. And both Python and MATLAB have very good ODE initial value problem solvers. And they employ some sophisticated approaches, such as adaptive time stepping, where the integration time step is automatically varied to improve efficiency of the solution. In Python, 
There are two functions to be aware of. There is ODE int that provides a straightforward general purpose interface for solving ODEs. And there's also ODE that provides additional flexibility and options. In MATLAB, the most popular function is ODE45, and that uses the classical fourth order runger cutter method. And in the next few videos, we're going to discuss how these functions work, and we're going to look at properties of methods like the runger cutter method.